a little bit of testing here of the camera to make sure it's level. You know, this is a new technology, and the manner in which I've got it mounted on this helmet is almost hilarious. I look like a Teletubby, which I quite frankly hate. Ooh, tubby. So we're in Washington Square on the Wednesday night skate. This is approximately a 12-mile skate. These skates last between 10 to 14 miles. They usually come in at about 12 miles. And they take approximately two hours to complete. So we start almost at 8 o'clock sharp most Wednesday nights. And we will skate to just about 10 o'clock. That's when we uh, either arrive back in Union Square or we will skate past it in a general vicinity to the host restaurant or bar that the skaters will meet up afterwards or skaters just peel off and go home so here I am talking to Daniel Daniel is a longtime skater he's a member of the National Skate Patrol I believe still and a member of the Empire Skate Club and he's one hell of a guy he's one of those people who like myself kind of made skating a a part of your life not just a, a hobby and to that degree, uh, I should say he got very, very physically fit from this experience. If you think that skating can be a way for you to get into great top physical condition, he is a living example of it. Now, the, the girl here I'm talking to, Again, I'm trying to be careful that I give out names of people that I know and be cool with it as opposed to... I'm talking to her about the skate farm. Uh, that is down in Virginia. Look it up. The legendary Eddie Matzker runs the skate farm. He's like the Michael Jordan of skating in many ways. And he's actually raced trolley cars up hills in San Francisco and beat them. And that's what I'm yammering about with her. There we go. Telling her the same thing I'm telling you. So to the right are some of the school buildings from NYU, which actually NYU kind of surrounds Washington Square. There's a number of buildings that belong to NYU. So the, the students will, during the day, you know, be crossing Washington Square from one class to another, theoretically. We are skating essentially due south. We're heading, we're, we're, we're going to skate through Little Italy and, and somewhat skirt the financial district. We'll, we'll kind of stop short of being in the financial district proper. And the same for Chinatown. We'll kind, of, we'll kind of skate along the edge of that as we then start to skate east towards, let's say, you know, Brooklyn. But we're not going to go to Brooklyn, of course. So we're going to come down, I think this is West Broadway that general vicinity and again you can see the World Trade Center in front of us we have a number of unspoken rules we want to stay to one side usually if you're passing people you'll you'll break out into the open lanes but for the most part we do try to stay to one side of the road if there's a bike lane we'll stay there And that's uh, Mike sharing with the group uh, some smart advice. You know, be aware that we're in two-way traffic as opposed to one-way. I believe we've this is the, I believe we've crossed Houston Street. We end up going left on Canal, I believe. Uh, I wish I could get if you can swing around with your 360, you'll see these street corners. You'll be able to get the information that I'm not articulating. But inevitably, that's what does happen. We, we cross Houston to Canal, take a left. It's spelled Houston. It is Houston. So here's another longtime skate friend, but I'm dressed so... I'm bundled up so much people can hardly recognize me. And I have one of my wireless earphones in the right ear listening to music so that my left ear can hear the the ambient sounds of <laughs> the city. 
I say that as somebody's leaning on the horn, which, by the way, it is illegal to blow your horn in New York City. It's a $350 fine. People do it anyway. But I do think it cuts down on it. And in the background, I'm talking to Jessica about me wanting to confirm at la the uh, Wednesday Night Skate website or the Facebook page that that tonight was actually taking place. You know, for a local New Yorker, they can show up in Union Square and nobody's there. Go home. You know, for me, driving two and a half hours up and two and a half hours back needlessly is a is a tough pill to swallow, especially one with gas and tolls. It runs about seventy four dollars. So, uh, I think it's up to nineteen, eighteen dollars. I'm sorry to cross the Holland Tunnel or the Lincoln Tunnel or the Washington Bridge. I believe that's Ducky up there in front of me to the right. Very good friend of mine in the club. Got to know him last year, but he's been there a few years. And sometimes you don't talk to people for the longest time, and then one day you talk to them, and then you're close friends. Now, the club will bring out the diehards this, this early on in the season, but for the most part, you'll usually see between 60 to 100 skaters in this group as the weather gets warmer. So the numbers do grow. The skate season starts in April and ends in October. And in the, right now we're passing a number of, you know, some of the finer, almost proper fashion establishments as we get closer to the financial district. We're in lower Manhattan right now if you're keeping score at home. We will not get to the World Trade Center if you're curious as you're watching this video. I do have other videos where we actually skate right underneath it. If you look at one of my previous um, non-360 videos of the Big Apple Roll, we skate right underneath it. Get some real fine 4K daytime shots. Okay, we've burned through another seven, roughly eight minutes through New York City. We're in Lower Manhattan. We're going to see all different parts of New York in each one of these segments, so stick with me. There's a lot to see. 